Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Steve Duvall, and this is Sedona.biz News. We're in for a treat today. We have with us Linda Goldenstein, resident and gallery owner of Sedona for over 10 years. So together, we're get to, gonna get to know Linda quite a bit better. Good day, Linda. Thanks for being here today. Good day, Steve. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. We've made a couple of attempts at getting together, but getting our schedules to coincide was a bit of a challenge. Busy people. Busy people indeed. Busy, but busy nice people. Nice to be here. Yeah. So, Linda, goodness gracious, what's happening in Linda's life? Oh, well, you know, we opened the new space on Dry Creek Road for the gallery, for Goldenstein Gallery, at 70 Dry Creek. And we're moved in there. We moved out of our uptown space. So um, that's our primary focus, and we have almost an acre to grow our sculpture garden. So we're busy with, with learning how to be in our new space and, and meeting all our west side friends and, and uh, clients. It's a lot of fun. Your sculpture garden. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, we've always had outdoor sculpture. We've always offered that, monumental pieces. And at the Dry Creek location, we're on almost an acre. There's a lot of wonderful natural landscaping, and we're adding to that and making courtyards and such. But we have an opportunity with all that space to really bring in some exciting pieces. Some of them are quite large, and uh, interactive pieces that you can play with, all kinds of, of fun pieces that are um, beautiful for people to enjoy and, and collect. Well, this is a nice change for you, from your uptown location then because it gives you more opportunity to do more stuff, sell more items, ex and, and uh, have more pieces of artwork that you can share with the community. Yes, yes, and we have very easy parking there, so it's convenient for, for people to come visit us. And, um, you know, we started in West Sedona. So my, I actually started my business in West Sedona, so it's nice to come full circle and be back back there again. It's great energy. Yeah. I dare say that you would be an anchor on that end of town now. Oh, well, thank you. I think um, we are, we're seeing some movement of galleries out that way. A Passion for Place is, is moving to West Sedona from the Hillside location and uh, I'll be near um, a Pizza Heaven back in that area. So we have another gallery in our gallery association that's coming out west here this summer. Good for the city and good for you. I think so, I think it's good for all of us. Yeah. So if we can talk a little bit about you and your background, you've been in business here in Sedona for over 10 years. Right. Did you come from uh, Omaha, Nebraska or Chicago? Where are you from? <laughs> Well, I come from a long, my family line is a long line of entrepreneurs, that's for sure. But our, our roots are pretty deep here in Arizona, actually, Steve. On my, um, on my mom's side, my grandfather was a homesteader in Winona, so he came in the 1800s, the late 1800s. And uh, my grandmother and all of her sisters graduated from the normal school teaching school up, up at NAU, and um, then my family migrated out to the uh, Route 66 area through my mom and dad meeting at college, and that part of, of my family came here in the 1920s, actually. So they came down and they ran the station at Congress at first, Arizona, and then the one at Valentine. But, you know, a station wasn't a sta gas station like we think now. It was a postal station for the train. That's quite a history. Yeah, the so train was how they moved everything back then. And right. then Route 66, the Mother Road. Yeah. So that's where my family lived when I was born. Get your kicks on Route 66. Yeah, yeah. It's a little quiet out there yeah. these days. But it, is the station still there? You know, there's... Uh, they. They had a grocery store. My grandmother was the postmistress. You would people would flock there on Valentine's Day to mail their their letters from Valentine, Arizona, and um, you know they had cabins. They had a restaurant. So there were a lot of fun things they had that that died out after the the. Um, interstate was built, and they sold before that. Thankfully, all that's left now 
is one single cabin and it's on the property of a wild animal park that's out there now. <laughs> Gonna get nostalgic and go out there? I, I, there's gotta be some, it's cool, you know, in some way, but yeah, I get very nostalgic out there and I actually have family out there at Peach Springs on the Wallapai Reservation. Okay. Yes, yeah, my uncle married a, a lovely Wallapai woman, my Aunt Rosie, and so I have about 30 cousins named Goldenstein that live on the Wallapai Reservation today. And do you get any art? for your gallery from that part of the country? You know, unfortunately, I don't. And I would love to, to uh, cultivate that. The Wallapais have, um, were basket makers, and a lot of it was, is a lost art. But there's a little revival over there, so you know, we'll see what happens. That's extraordinary. So what yeah. brought you to Sedona then? Well, you know, my family in Sedona goes back for decades. Uh, Walter Nelson, my great uncle, and uh, another one, Norman Norman. A lot of people <laughs> remember his name. That's an um, easy name to remember. Norman yes, Norman. and his daughter <laughs> is Kim King. Actually, a lot of people know her locally. She lives here in, or lives and works in Sedona. And so, anyway, they came, you know, in the 40s and 50s. And Walter had Nelson's Country Market at the Y, and he was also Arizona State Highway Commissioner. So he was the one that made our 89A in West Sedona a wide road. And uh, there was a lot of controversy then, just as much as we had over the lights, from what I understand, that people didn't want. There's no that issue. That wide street. <laughs> There's no issue in this town that we can't be divided about. Right? <laughs> so it goes back a ways. <laughs> but he was a visionary, I think, and he helped Arizona out in many ways by uh, paving roads like that, like 89A. Uh -huh. So a lot of history here in Sedona. And, and I just love Sedona, but actually when my family traveled to Flagstaff and then they, my dad bought a horse ranch south of Camp Verde, the old Adobe Ranch, which was one of the first Anglo dwellings in the Verde Valley, a real adobe. Was it a uh, uh, homestead? It was. It was a homestead. It was, and it was very early, and everyone who ever lived in our house was buried in the cemetery there. <laughs> I hope there isn't a plot for you out there. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it used to freak me out, but as I got older, I began to appreciate the history. We have a place for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, galleries. How, so, how did you transition from Route 66, young lady, to a gallery owner in Sedona? Well, you know, I, I uh, had an opportunity through a series of events to work in Santa Fe, New Mexico, with a company called Morelli that was creating very high-end custom architectural products and doors, such as doors and such, or furniture, hand-carved, beautiful, beautiful things. And so I went to work there and um, loved it. It was very exciting. I was running the office there, the business side, and then moved into the sales side and, you know, had George Strait looking at $18,000 sofas. And, you know, that just didn't happen back home. It was a whole new experience for me. And the people were lovely and the work was lovely. And, and I just, you know, was very blessed to have that um, experience. After a while, I went out on my own and started a business called the Santa Fe Craftsman's Guild. And we targeted homes that were in the 10 million and up to build range, a lot of them in Scottsdale, to offer our custom work to them. And we worked with a lot of architects. We didn't do our own designs. We really did architecturally or designer designed pieces. And we're able to work in some wonderful homes in Paradise Valley, Santa Fe and such. And and uh, I just love that too. But uh, my daughter Tanya, so I have two children here, Cheston and Tanya, that live in Sedona, and, and they started having children, and I decided it was time to come back to Arizona. So I, I uh, let go of that business and shifted into the arts, actually, by. Kind of an easy transition for you, it sounds like. It was, you know, it really was in that uh, when I. I was helping a friend at a gallery on the plaza in Santa Fe, 
and people would come in and they would just love something for what it was, the art. And it was very different from custom furniture where they wouldn't look at it and say, it's beautiful, but can you make it one foot longer? It was just that they loved the art and they accepted it for what it was and it was so life enhancing for them. And then I got to know the artists and love that side of it. So the whole circle of the, the art and the collector and being a part of it, it, it really, um, it's, it's very rewarding in many different ways and life enhancing. So I was hooked. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people who come to Sedona, they have the million dollar club. They come here with two million and you leave with one. Right. And you're certainly not a part of that club. You seem to have yeah. found some things. What have you found in Sedona for yourself? Um, you mean with the business? Yeah, and then life in general. Oh, that's such a great question. You know, I have really found what feels like home to me. I love to travel. You and I have talked about our travels. I love to travel, but I love coming home to Sedona. You know, I think it's the best place to call home. It's the best reason for leaving so you can come back. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, it's fun to get the stimulation and all of that, but you, you know, you come back, you see those red rocks, and you just know that, you know, it's home. You're, for me, I feel that way, very embraced by this community and on all levels with the people, with the environment. And, um, I, you know, when I started my business here in 2001, my art business, I really knew it was a place where we would be able to be ourselves, be creative, and be able to, to you know, maybe make it in the business. Unlike some cities are, are really kind of tough, you know, but we had a history of the arts in Sedona, which was what is wonderful. You know, we have some wonderful uh, cowboy artists of America, whatever it might might be, and we have this great artist colony here, which is what we have been for so long, and uh, all that mixed up with a loving, peaceful community. Because even when we're mad at each other, we're still a in, we have our loving and peaceful side to us, <laughs> and um, I think that's great. So you know, that's what I found here. I think I found a lot of friends, and my family's here. Perfect. My roots are here. You've been very generous with yourself and with your business. Mm. I know you're involved with the film festival. Yes. What other activities do you do? Well, I serve on the board of the film festival, and I've been involved with the Sedona Chamber of Commerce for seven years, actually. I have a very deep respect for the Chamber of Commerce and what they do for our community, and so critically important, and, and what they do to promote the arts, all, the, all levels of, of the wonderful things that we have here. So I feel blessed to be a part of that board, and I was chairman, actually, of that. and, and was really honored to be chairman in the time that we were able to purchase the Sedona Marathon and make that an event that, that's ongoing here from uh, Karen Livesey, who was great in starting it and great in working with the chamber on that too. But um, I work with, let's see, I work with the Chamber Music Sedona I, and uh, the Sedona Film School. Film is close to both of our hearts. Indeed. And uh, we've done just scores of things. And we've been, our community partners have been so great. The Arts Festival, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Boys and Girls Club when they were here. The Verde Valley Sanctuary, you know. We just have got to, had the opportunity to um, really do some, again, life-enhancing things, you know. The, the gallery is such a, been a wonderful vehicle for partnering in the community and that was always it went in the early days when I started it and people would come to me and they'd say oh can you donate this or that or money and and we really we didn't have a lot that we could give in that way but we could we could give them our audience you know we could give a voice mm -hmm. through our 
um, publicity and, and we could we could share our space in some way and so that's what what we did you gave what you could give yeah and it worked out great and we've been and it's been so re wonderful for us too I mean you know for we've had chamber music Sedona in the gallery every year performing the bluegrass festival and I it just it, I have to tell you I just sometimes I feel like it's not my life that I'm looking at with the gallery because you never know who's going to walk in the door and we've met so many interesting people and had these great musicians and we've had you know these Tony Curtis you know who <laughs> ever thought yeah. we would represent Tony I would represent Tony Curtis as an artist so funny and what a great experience you know and uh, and not just for myself, I think a lot of people had a great experience around that. He was that. quite a fancier of ladies, as I remember. Oh, Tony, uh, to the <laughs> end, to the end, uh, you know. And you had to love that about him. He loved life, and he had a great philosophy. And I'll tell you, he had one of the best work ethics of anyone I've ever met. And it was challenging for him physically sometimes there at the end. And he was on time. He would sit down and people would line up. He'd hold court in, our, in my gallery, basically. And, and people would line up for hours to meet him and talk to him. And he'd sign whatever they wanted him to sign or, or their, his artwork, hopefully, because he's a great artist. And, and um, he wouldn't leave if there was a single person left there to talk to. And I know he was absolutely, we wore Tony out, I think, at the end. <laughs> but he was happy. <laughs> he was indeed. And you've spread a lot of good cheer and a lot of good feelings, a lot of good vibe throughout the community. You really provide an example that we can all aspire to. Well, thank you, Steve. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. So in our remaining couple of minutes here, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us? Oh, I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah, please <laughs> is, do. Is there anything in particular that really stands out in your mind, something that was really meaningful to you? About An enlightenment experience or a, um, you know, a particular experience in town here, maybe working with one of the nonprofits? Or, well, I don't want to get personal, but I mean, sure. you know, it's been a good life for you. And is there anything that really makes you shine? You know, um, I always like to say that uh, regarding the gallery, my artists make me look good. And I think, you know, early on with my business, in any business that I've been in, I learned that I'm really as good as the people I work with. And I've been so blessed to have the support of those people, be it the artists, be it the collectors, be it you, whoever it might be, you know, to have this great exchange here mm -hmm. and, and, and in the global community for that matter, you know. So I'm just so thankful for it all, you know. That's what life's supposed to be all about. Yeah, and sometimes That's we good. forget, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm reminding myself to right now. How thankful I am. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate that. Thank and for you. sharing your life with not only us here in the studio, but also all the people out there watching who wonder, who is this woman? Where'd she come from? How she always smiles? <laughs> That's infectious, you know. Thanks, Steve. Thank yeah. you for having me. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to cut it off right now. We could probably go on for hours, but we've been with the lovely Linda Goldenstein. A uh, nice lady, very involved in the community, has a wonderful gallery, and it looks like you'll probably continue on. We will. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Steve Duvall, and this has been Sedona.biz News.